The polar vortex is set to unload as we head into that second week of January. We're starting to get more and more confirmation of that stratospheric warming event that we've been highlighting on this channel coming to fruition as the massive spike in the Arctic has dislodged the polar vortex coming over the mid latitudes and plunging into the lower 48 by the time we head into that second week of January with easily the coldest temperatures so far this season. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel and I would love to reach 250,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And you can help me get there by subscribing to the channel and following all my daily breakdowns. So for today, as we talked about in yesterday's video, we've got the biggest storm of the season. Unfortunately, it's a significant tornado outbreak that's going to unfold this afternoon into the overnight for much of Dixie Alley into the southeast. We're already having a severe thunderstorm watch in place in the Dallas Warmoth area this morning. That extends into East Texas. I think things really start to ramp up later this morning into the noon time frame in Far East Texas. And that's when things torn, turn tornadic. We've got a upgraded moderate risk for all three levels of severe weather and especially tornadoes, if not strong tornadoes. And yes, unfortunately, you know, the atmosphere is prime to produce some even violent tornadoes that's coming up. So it's a significant severe weather outbreak today. I think things get going around the noon time frame into Far East Texas and really ramping up into the afternoon, into the overnight. So very high alert for Far East Texas into Louisiana, as well as into Mississippi, getting all the way into, the, into Alabama later on tonight, into the overnight. And that just continues into the wee hours of the morning as you head towards the Atlanta region. And then that continues even on the Sunday as we do have even a still a slight risk for some of those even turning severe on Sunday. So obviously not nearly as intense as what you're going to get today, but you definitely still have to be on high alert with some of that uh, tornado act activity, some of that larger hail and some of the damaging winds extending through Atlanta, back into the Charlotte region, lifting into Raleigh and heading all the way up into Virginia by the time we head into late, say Sunday night. But at the same time, all this is taking place. This is happening up, happening up there in the stratosphere. So now we're taking you 20 to 30 miles up in the atmosphere where we're starting to get confirmation of that spike and that Arctic temperatures. And that dislodges the polar vortex and sends it down through the mid latitude so it will be a step down process as we head into the month of january but by the time we get into that second week of january a lot of guidance is really coming together as that arctic air will build up there into the yukon territory and then plunge southbound as we head into that second week of january so at the beginning of january it starts off as a transition time frame where so we're getting all the warmer air and then the and then the stormier conditions for much of the lower 48 especially the deep south as of right now but things slowly start to change as we turn the turn the calendar to 2025 as we head into new year's day we start to see a lot more blocking starting to build up there across the top and so whenever we start the beginning stages of some of that blocking come to fruition that will allow these colder temperatures these lower pressures to start building underneath so yes it will be a step down process so the initial stage would likely not be arctic air but by the time we get into the second week of january it definitely will be arctic air so right now we're working with over the next five days we've got an active polar jet stream that continues to funnel the well above average precipitation that what they've been seeing across the pacific northwest into the intermountain west and then we also have an active subtropical jet that's complements of all the heavier thunderstorms, the severe, the severe weather that's taking place between now and the next couple of days. So this activity, this area 
continues to be very active as we head into the month of January. So as we head into that, say, January 3rd time frame, we're definitely starting to see more of that Arctic air starting to build up there in the Yukon territories, the British Columbia region. That will likely cross polar flow and start plunging southbound the deeper we get into, say, the first weekend of January, but especially as we get into that second week of January. And as it does, the step down process would likely you know, buckle the jet stream and send the polar jet a little bit further south. So that will allow most of that precipitation that's forming in the rain right now will change over to snow heading into say that first weekend of January with the snow belt coming across the, the northern interior of the United States down through Montana. It would likely stop Sundamore in the vicinity of the Kansas region and then slingshotting eastward into Missouri, Illinois, back into Indiana through Ohio and up the eastern seaboard into the Mid-Atlantic as well as into the Northeast. And that's exactly what the Climate Prediction Center is kind of highlighting right now. Once they start to feel the effect of some of that colder air coming in uh, from, from the Arctic, then that will change over into the form of snow. And some of this could be uh, some heavier snows once we get into that, say, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time frame of January. A good swath of snow swinging through Montana, back through Wyoming, as well as into Colorado, getting all the way as far south, likely into Kansas. It would stop bump somewhere in the vicinity of across this region, just north of the Texas Panhandle, through Missouri and back through Kentucky and up into West Virginia, as well as into the Mid-Atlantic and heading into that northeast as that colder air continues to plunge a little bit further south. So now we'll take you to the teleconnections because most of, if not all the ensemble members are on board. So you've got the Arctic oscillation and you got a predominantly negative once we turn the calendar to 2025. And as we especially head into that second week of January, that January 8th timeframe, that's the start of that second week. That's when you see at the lowest, it will likely see that Arctic air plunging into the lower 48 by then and the east the epo is also predominantly negative as we head into january and then you've got the arctic oscillation you've got the negative nao your north american atlantic oscillation also negative so you have all three saying hey we've got much colder air definitely going to be on the table especially as we head towards that say six time frame that's when you'll start to see more more colder air will start plunging into the lower 48 you got more blocking starting to build over the top that will keep trapping the cold underneath that will be building the step down process of that colder jet stream will be continue to buckle further south the more impactful that arctic air runs into that um, that polar jet stream and that would likely have more pink start showing up on the map into uh, british columbia and finally releasing into that montana region plunging into the central part of the u.s as we head towards say that january the 6th time frame but it's really not until that second week and that's exactly what we've been really highlighting on this channel is that second week of january now the models are starting to come together and saying hey we're getting confirmation of yes this is going to happen so we've got a 10 54 arctic high pressure highlighted across montana this 1042 plunging southbound into the kansas region that likely gives you the indication of truly arctic air underneath that that's exactly what the ensemble members are kind of printing out as we start that second week of january that january the 8th time frame this would likely be the easiest the coldest temperatures so far this season as we're starting to get the Arctic air, the true Arctic air plunging into the lower 48 as we head into that second week of January. And it's not just the US, it's also Europe. So Europe in that time frame also turns cold. This would likely be seven to 10 days from now, also within that say January the seventh time frame. very cold air, much colder air coming back into Europe as well. And then as we head the start, the beginning stages of that second week of, of uh, January, that's when the polar jet will continue to plunge just a little bit further south. So here's your, here's your likely your snow line by then. And then as some of that Arctic air will continue to plunge south, 
you'll have your active subtropical jet stream as well. So some of that could start changing over into some mixy type setup as we head into that second week of January. So you'll have your polar jet to the north, your more subtropical jet to the south. So we'll have to watch all this kind of come to fruition. But if you live south of this line, this would be likely the time frame if you're looking for any type of wintry precipitation. North of that would likely be staying mostly all snow, but this it's going to be a um, you know, a massive plunge in temperatures as you're looking at the jet, jet stream by the time we head into that January night time frame. This is your polar jet. So you have a very active polar jet continuing to buckle, feeling the effects of that Arctic air. And then you've got your subtropical jet further south. So there's definitely going to be a battle zone in the middle there, probably creating some icy setup, some sleet, snowy mix, even for some areas across the south as well. So that would be your more favored time frame if you're looking for any type of uh, wintery precipitation by then but definitely the coldest air of the season comes in by the time we head into say january the 9th the january the 10th time frame there's not gonna much be much to stop it so once that dam breaks if you will it's going to be full throttle all the way to Mexico, folks. It's going to plunge all the way down into the deep south and then likely get slingshotted off to the east by the time we head into, say, that 10th, 11th time frame. So much of the lower 48, mostly east of the Continental Divide, will take the full brunt of this Arctic air mass that's coming into that second week of the month of January. So... And then most of the ensembles are on board. Even the Canadian is also implying east of the east of the continental divide would easily be the coldest anomalies, the temperatures of the season. The GFS ensembles is already looking at that as well. East of the continental divide, plunging south, slingshotting eastward. So most, if you live east of the continental divide, you'll likely feel the full brunt of what's coming for the lower 48, it plunges down from the Yukon territories through Montana all the way down into the south and into the southeast, well into the mid-Atlantic as well as into the northeast as well. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.